and welcome to episode 10 of Tales from the Bargain Bin. I'm Bill Tucker, and with me this evening is a friend of the show that's been on this program numerous times. He's told fantastic stories, and he has a wonderful podcast entitled Games My Mom Found. Uh, Please welcome Mr. Mike Alberton. What's going on, Mike? Hey, not too much. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, my pleasure. And thank you for jumping on last minute. This uh, <laughs> this Zelda project is going way slower than expected uh, due to life circumstances. Um, so I appreciate you um, jumping on for this little piece of, I don't want to call it filler. It's not filler. It's quality it's side content. It's Yeah, it's quality side content. Um, the game we'll be discussing today is the PlayStation 1 title Crash Bandicoot Warped. Now, Mike, this is your pick, so why why'd you pick it? Well, because I know a little bit of your show. I was thinking of the games that most games I got as, as a kid that were presents were games that I asked for because the only people that bought me games were either my parents or my uncle, and they usually always went with, like, what do you want? Well, I want that game. And it was usually RPGs and things, and so they would grab that for me. And I always get my pick, you know, I, I get to pick the one game for the holidays, so I, you know, and... I don't remember exactly why, but I I think my mother wanted to buy me, because I usually would pick some brand new game, and she wanted to get me another game. I don't know if this was cheaper at the time or whatnot, but she bought me Crash Bandicoot Warped, and I had had a PlayStation 1, but I never played a Crash Bandicoot game. I actually am terrible at these type of games, and I was terrible at them as a kid, (laughs) and I just remember, like, I was like, okay, you know, what's, (laughs) what's this? Like, I think I knew what Crash Bandicoot was at the time, but... I had never played one or two before, and this one doesn't say three on it. It just says warped, which is technically three. But Right. And so I, you, just yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I just had no idea what I was getting myself into, and I remember just kind of playing it off and on over the over, over time. Like, it was never a big game for me, but it was, just, it was another game in my collection that when I wasn't in the mood for an RPG, I would just load it up and try playing it. Never got far, though. So, so you were not a big Crash Bandicoot fan. Like you, so clearly no. you had never played one. No, I only actually own, as a kid, two platformers for PS1, Spyro the Dragon, which my mom also bought me, and then Crash Bandicoot Warped some years later. And that was it. I had only RPGs mainly for PS1. So that's that's a very interesting thing. I never had a PS1 personally, so I never experienced any Crash Bandicoot anything uh, firsthand or of its time. (laughs) I've attempted to play Crash Bandicoot since. I don't know why people like this franchise so much. <laughs> I don't understand it. Maybe it's just not my thing because it wasn't my kind of game. Um, I spent about 25 minutes. I usually try to play these things. Um, but due to life issues, I just had to watch it for 25 uh, <laughs> minutes. I, I just watched it and I kind of skimmed through it. And it's just Crash Bandicoot. Right, obviously, uh, for, basically going forward. There's a little side-scrolling in there too. And uh, what I do think is interesting about this game is that there are there's a lot of variety, uh, as far as I could tell. There's little wave race sixty four style uh, yes. you know races, and there's airplane you know uh, shooting you know what they call dog <laughs> fights you know, and they, there are there's a good amount of variety, and that stuff looks fun. It the is the rest of it. It's not this, very fun. <laughs> this one is decent, I think. I, I I haven't replayed it ever. I've been it almost ended up on the show, but then it didn't because I won't spire on stage. <laughs> but it was just one of those games that it was just like. But you actually in like warp, you go through time, so you have a medieval, you have a medieval level, you have the Great Wall, you have a level in the Great Wall of China, just random shit like that. This is before I was big into history. Where now I'm like, okay, that's cool. I didn't care when I was when I was this age. But right, yeah, yeah. That was kind of like the gimmick of this one. Like this one also added a lot more f- different levels than the first two had. Where the first two are much more running either towards the screen, away from the screen, side scroller. Two has levels where you're riding an animal, but this game added a lot more than that, from what I have under what I've understood. Because I since then I have played Crash Bandicoot one and two multiple times, never got far. I can't stand any of them. But <laughs> I, the one thing I and I I am afraid that this episode is going to be now Mike and I just talking smack about Crash Bandicoot, which you, it's, there's a lot of fans of this game, and I'd I'd love to hear in maybe the uh, comments. Or the replies to the Twitter post or the Facebook post, <laughs> if I remember to do that. Like, I would love to hear why you like this game. A lot of because, people do. 
it's, they love this game, and that's and that's perfectly fine and valid. The most I know about it, and maybe I'd have to like play through the whole thing, but I never found it fun. You know, was <laughs> it's at the end of Uncharted Four, I think. You 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 play yes. a round of Crash Bandicoot. Spoiler, sorry. And there's a thing that goes hoo da ba. That's that's the most I know. And that's of your health this system. And is that the health system? Yeah, you get a well. You, if you don't have the mass, you die in one hit. If you get the mass, I think you can either take one or two hits with the mass. That's what that mask floating around is for. Okay. Yes. All right. I, okay. Well, I mean, I actually know someone that really likes Crash Bandicoot too. My wife. She's a big fan of the second game because she had it as a kid. And like I actually have bought in multiple copies of the Insane Trilogy <laughs> on PS4 and Switch because she really wanted just to be able to play it and then wanted to play it on a handheld. I mean, she loved the second one. She didn't ever finish it because, God, that game is freaking hard. Like, they really freaking like hard. It would be. It, seem, it seems like there's lots of, like, circular movement. So if you're going straight, right, and then you have, like, four apples because... And in this game, clearly, the whole goal is to collect as many apples, which makes sense. It's collecting is good. It's fun. Well, apples and, are essentially like coins. You get 100. Yeah, they're life. like coins. And so I'm not going to make fun of that. But if you collect apples, they'll be in a clump. You kind of have to like turn a little circle in the midst of your like forward progression, which, again, it's fine. But it just feels like it ruins pacing. And this the moments where you have to escape things like, like uh, t- Temple of Doom or whatever <laughs> when yes. – you know, when like a rhino is, is chasing you, that sucks. I, I remember doing that in the when I played it in Uncharted 4. You had to run from a boulder and I didn't know where I was jumping. I never had enough information on the screen to make an intelligent choice. So I felt like I was just failing and then just having to memorize what to do where that's not fun platforming. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible platforming. Of- a lot of crash, in my opinion, with little. I mean, I played some. I played some of two warp one, warp been a lot hasn't been since I was a kid. But it always felt like to me a lot of memorization. Like I mean, when I played two, yeah. there was a level you had to ride a polar bear, and you just are you running straight forward on this polar bear, but you can't really alter the speed very well, or maybe you can slow down a little bit. But I a lot of it was just I had to memorize. Okay, I got to go left. I got to go right here. I got to go left, left, right. Like I had to memorize everything in order to do it successfully, or I wouldn't make it. Yeah, I couldn't react fast enough. Yeah. I had to just know, and that's and that's just a flaw in design. And again, I'm so sorry if you enjoy. If you were looking at the <laughs> title of this, like, ooh, Crash Bandicoot three. I love that game. I I wonder what the guys have to say about Crash Bandicoot three. <laughs> it's Not, a good game. Is it? I think I, it I is. I actually was going to put it on the show, but I let. On, on my show, but I let Emmanuel choose either between this or Spyro the Dragon, and he chose Spyro the Dragon because I, I felt I owed him <laughs> after making him play some of the stuff I have. I think you made a market. I think that was a successful, a, a, a wise choice. Spyro, I like Spyro. That's a good game. <laughs> I do. Um, I do too now. But like, Crash to me was always like, it's a really pretty game. Yes. And like, I mean, it's mainly the first three. Warped is the end of the first three that people love because after Warped, Naughty Dog is done with the franchise. And then, I think it's Activision that owns Crash Bandicoot. They just start porting it out to everybody. And yeah. I had never played any of those. I just played Warp for like one Christmas. And then I just never, I just always had my copy randomly. But like the series completely changes as it progresses where they get really, really, really bad from what I've heard. And that's interesting. I mean, I and again, I, I uh, the first playthrough I started watching, I'm watching I'm like, wow, this is this is really pretty. Like it's beautiful, <laughs> bold and colorful and clean. And like, wait a second, this isn't the PlayStation <laughs> one. And then I like scroll to the left a little bit. And it's the, yeah, like he said, the insane version. I'm like, ah, that's it a just, remaster. It makes me so happy that it exists though. Oh yeah. I agree with that. Like I have the insane trilogy is one of those remakes where it doesn't add from my understanding. And I have played it a few times. It doesn't really add any features. Like it doesn't have rewind, doesn't have save states. Hence the reason why I've never really played it. (laughs) It doesn't have any of that, but it looks so pretty. And I think they changed the physics a little bit from what I've understood. But it's a, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it's very much just a, a remaster of the original game, but so much prettier and on modern consoles. And I, I love that. I have no interest in playing it, but I love that it exists. Oh yeah. And that, and that's always the case for me. I think anything that's, that people have a fondness for or a nostalgia for, if you can create something, create a remaster or make it available for people to enjoy, I think that's, 
an easy, I should say, easy way for people to enjoy it. You know, not everybody's going to make an emulator. Not everybody's going to, you know, do stuff like that and make a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so if, no. you make these th- if you make these things just available to buy, people will buy them, you know? So, <laughs> then you uh, end up legal use. <laughs> yeah. Then, so you might as well, might as well in, in, and do that if you can as a developer or company. So I'm super glad it exists. And again, it looks cool. And it seems like there's some really fun areas of it. There um, are. Just I mean, you Crash Bandicoot boss, gameplay. You have boss fights. All I remember there being a blue Time Lord type boss. I think I fought him. I feel like I played some of this game, but I don't remember much of it. Like, I'm watching a speedrun right now as we're talking, and I don't remember, like, any of this. So I don't think I ever got far as a kid because I just, I was really bad at action games as a kid. I'm still not great but i was like i i was couldn't i could not be super mario world as a kid i didn't even get that far in that game as a kid yeah it's and that's it's not one a of hard those game things. yeah no and yeah well, this parts of mario will get get um get tricky but yeah it's 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 a uh, it's an interesting concept and i i think as crash bandicoot games go um as far as i'm reading it's it's one of the best warped received universal acclaim <laughs> according to everyone's favorite website metacritic because we all we all know and love metacritic um how's this for a uh, for a uh, a liner johnny ball game <laughs> because that's what game pro editors were all called they all had their nicknames mm-hmm. right everyone had their nicknames in the old game pro days johnny ball game of game pro concluded that the game was a very strong contender for the playstation game of the year and that the rowdy rowdy gameplay Rowdy Rowdy? Yeah, Rowdy Rowdy. Two words. Rowdy Rowdy gameplay will keep your head spinning for days. So, if you trust Johnny Ball Game... That's a catchy line, though. Like, that really is kind of catchy. Yeah, but Rowdy Rowdy Rowdy, that's... Isn't that a wrestler? Rowdy 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 Rowdy, Rowdy, Rowdy. Yeah, Rowdy 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 Piper. I'm I'm not a wrestling fan, but it might be Rowdy Rowdy. I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to Google, but... I don't. I I genuinely don't don't care enough. Yeah, people. Uh, yeah, really, really dig this game. Mm-hmm. It has oh. a huge fan base, and I mean, Crash Bandicoot for a lot of people. I mean, and you also had four PS One games. You had these. You had the three main ones, and you also had maybe you had Nitro Two with PS One, or maybe that's PS Two. I can't remember. But you also had a game called Crash Bash, which was a like four player team game that also came out on PS One around this time. Like Mario yeah, Party, I, but with Crash characters. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I remember Crash Bandicoot mostly for being PlayStation's de facto mascot. Play, you know, I, PlayStation didn't have a mascot. You know, there was no Mario. There was no Sonic. No, so it took them Crash, a while. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot kind of stole that and kind of just slipped into that. I remember distinctly... Crash Bandicoot appearing in commercials for Sony <laughs> Playstations and yes. appearing in like propag- anti Nintendo propaganda <laughs> and you know all so I remember that very very vividly, which I think is pretty interesting because uh, I have uh, friends who do the my friends at New Dad Gaming podcast. Um, we had a brief conversation about Crash Bandicoot, and I think it was Trevor from that uh, show. He he stated that he never liked Crash because he was always too edgy. Like, like <laughs> Naughty Dog was trying to appeal to the kids. Like, hey, kids, look at my baggy jeans and my sunglasses and my sick moves. It's like, stop trying to relate to me, okay? Brand, company, don't relate to me. You don't know who I am. You don't know where I live. You don't know who my parents are. Don't try, don't try to, like, you know... <laughs> he'll try to win me over with your super hip bandicoot because you're talking about like the commercials where he'd be like outside nintendo headquarters yelling at nintendo headquarters yeah. the guy in the mascot outfit yeah a guy in like in the in the disney outfit you know the disney world outfit of uh, the giant cartoon character outfit of crash bandicoot yeah and i i kind of agree with that you know that was kind <laughs> of the steez of the character like hey Look at me! I'm I think he doing was a dance. One of the first big mascots because you would have had Crash, you would have had the you know Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal. Those are some of the really early ones that kind of like Sony was trying to really take out there and market. So I mean that was yeah because I, I think Crash really did lead the charge in that because Sweet Tooth I, that was you know Sweet Tooth is not it's not universally <laughs> uh, acceptable or right? it's not it's not safe no. for parents. Hey, here's this demonic clown. Hey, Serial buy Twisted Metal. Clown. Serial killer clown, please twat by Twisted Metal. Um, but they never had a 
they never really had a uh, a mascot like that. So no, because I don't uh, think Spiral was never their mascot. Really, I mean, it was just Crash for some reason back then. I mean, they didn't have much. I mean, it wasn't really till the PS2 era when you get Ratchet and Sly and Jack, and and then they start getting act- like Killzone at one point. You know, they get actual characters and mascots. I mean, in the PS1 era, they didn't have a whole. They didn't have a whole lot to try to like compete, like you were saying, compete with Mario and Sonic. Well, I I would say that maybe the closest to a mascot other than Crash Bandicoot for Sony at that era was Tomb Raider. Oh, was Lara yeah, Croft. good point. So she was absolutely the face ha, 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 <laughs> of that of that um, of that era. Right, You're right. And I I forget that because I was I had a PS One early because like, I I got this game and everything, but I started with. It took me a little while. Like I remember, I, I mainly wanted a PS One just because I wanted Final Fantasy VII because I was a big Final Fantasy guy. I loved RPGs. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. Still do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember if Final Fantasy VII. I know it was a big deal in the gaming world, but I'm not sure if that if there was a big deal outside of that. Um, I I don't. I want to say so. it was. I don't. I don't know. And that's the thing. I, mean, I know it sold again, well, but I don't yeah. remember it. I feel like it. It still would have been just the gaming world. I don't think it would have reached out into the grand world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there there were no uh there was no cloud strife uh, mods for Doom, you know, mm-hmm. that you could play as. There were Lara Croft ones though. I sh- I <laughs> sure remember that. Um, well, yeah, no Tomb yeah. Raider and I mean Crash too like we we're saying like I mean those both were more out there. I mean, hell, they make Crash Bandicoot Funko Pops. I have multiple of the, multiple of them, so I know because <laughs> right. Tiff, my wife, wanted wanted all the Crash Band- wanted a bunch of Crash Bandicoot ones, and I'm like, but why? <laughs> but she just like she, you know, it's something she plays a kid, so it stuck with her. I mean, so yeah, like you were saying a lot of people love this series. We're just not the, either one of them. No, it's just we're 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 not. It. I pulled up a list uh, while you were talking of um, company slash system mascots, and there are some. Uh, there's some. Do there's some humdingers in here? Let's just say, um, I'm gonna name. So here, here's how. I'm, here's how we're gonna do this. I've we've got ten minutes to kill. Okay. These are about a half an hour, so I need ten minutes to kill. So let's <laughs> see if this can fill that time. All right, because I. How can we talk more about a game? Neither of us have played for probably more than a half an hour. So well, I played it more than half an hour. Just that you I played was, more than a half an hour. You I was. Didn't like I it. was in my. I wasn't. In, I didn't have a kid yet, and my son is about to be fifteen. So. <laughs> 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 Put that out there. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So let's. I'm going to give you the name of a company or developer, and I'm going to see if you can guess their mascot. I'm going to start with some relatively easy ones. So, Accolade. Accolade? I can't even think of who that is. Accolade. No? Is that you mean a claim? No, no Accolade. Not a claim. I don't know who Accolade is. All right. Well, Accolade, uh, Bubsy. Was That's why I don't by. know who Accolade is. I, I know ah, what Bubsy is. You know Bubsy. We all, we all know Bubsy. All right. Um, actually, should we do it with just the mascot, and then you can guess maybe the company? What do you think would be easier for you? I mean, company should be fine as long as it's companies I know. I wouldn't have known Bugsy either way. If I wouldn't know known what company it was. All right. Fair enough. Because um, there are some in here that's bizarre and bonkers. And I don't know if it actually even real. I think some of these are just troll answers. So let's do um, Hal Laboratory. Who was the face of Hal Laboratory? Kirby. Good. Well done. Well done. How about the face of Game Freak? Pikachu. Pikachu, of course, of course, Pikachu. My son has been at camp um, this last week, and evidently there's kids with him at camp who play Pokemon cards, <laughs> and now all he wants are Pokemon cards. He's like, Daddy, I want Pokemon cards. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't want to no, start No, you that. don't. You don't want to start that. I want to play Pokemon with those kids. <laughs> no, those kids don't. will murder you. Do you understand that? These kids have been had like an eight-year head start probably. They probably inherited them from like a, a, from a, from a relative Please, Man, I, please, please, for the sake of my wallet, because he has no concept of money. He's six. Well, yeah, he he's doesn't a have kid. any. They don't understand that like, these things require me to work late hours to <laughs> acquire son. So I'm really trying to like say no because again he'll go to he'll go there with a starter set and he'll just get murdered. And he's like, oh, but you can trade. I'm like, no, no, you're not going to trade. What are you going to trade your starter set with? Son? Hey, ooh, look at that, you know, elite hey, I'll legendary. I'll trade you that Charizard for a Pikachu. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Pikachu's cute. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know grown adults, grown ass adults 
who spend way too much money on Pokemon cards, okay? Me too. I met people. I, I was into Pokemon cards when I, was, when I was a kid, but I will never... I won't play any card game ever again in my life. Like, I will never go down I, that road again. I can't do it. Can't do it. I've done it. All right. So let's, let's keep the easier ones. Uh, <laughs> Cap- Capcom. There's two listed here. I would say Mega Man okay, perfect. and Ryu. Ah, oh, close. Captain Commando. I for- Captain Commando. Okay. I mean, that makes sense, but a guy who had one game, one arcade He's game, the and then one Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo port, and then was on Marvel vs. Capcom at different points. But Right. I get one, it. But he's a, ma- he's, he's a mascot. There it is. Uh, Bandai Namco. Again, they have two. One I've never heard of, and the other is world famous. God, I'm trying to think. I know, I know Bandai Namco well. Hey, Hachi? Yeah. No. Pac-Man. Oh, Pac-Man. Good point. And then the second one was Kelowna? That's a Kolo, mascot Kolo. for them? I don't know. I know Kelowna is Kolo. a PS1 platformer that also just got re... They put two, the two games together and released as a package for Switch, and people were freaking out. Okay. It's actually cool. a game that's going to be on the show some point later this year. Is it really? Yeah. Uh, see? Just look at that. L- it wasn't l- meant to be, at... but Mike really wanted me to put it on, and I needed a short game, so I'm like, okay. I love doing this with people who know games way more than I do. Yeah, it's called How Clona, about, the remake. Okay. It's called Clona Fantasy Reverie, Reverie Series, which is, I think, either a PS1 and PS2 game or something like that. But yeah, originally it's a PS1 game, there's a PS2 game for this series, and there's also a Game Boy Color game for Clona also, I'm pretty sure. All right. Awesome. So how <laughs> yeah, it, about it's a it's a yeah. series people do love. Like it's okay. I've never messed with it, never played it, but like someone that we both have talked to, Phil Phil Theobald is a big fan of Clona. That's awesome, man. That's cool. I, I again I'd never heard of that until this very moment. So this is <laughs> this is neat. Uh, uh so how about how about we do a big one? Sony Interactive Entertainment. They have four listed here. You don't okay, have I'm to gonna do guess maybe crash. Three other... Okay. I'm crash gonna... is wrong, so you can. Just, there's no oh, crash. Crash isn't here. right. No, crash is not listed. Is oh. Sony Interactive? They're probably under Naughty Dog, but oh we'll, yeah, we'll, but we'll okay. Huh. So for Sony properties, let's say Kratos. Ding. Okay. God, I should know this. I feel like I, I bet I, if I hear them, I bet I'll know all four of them. But I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I can't think of any other than Kratos for Sony. Six, I mean, six, no, uh, okay. Joel from Last of Us. No, oh, you never no, know. Sorry. I mean, Kratos is. I mean, Kratos is a freaking mass murderer. This is true. I mean, you know, Joel is a terrible person, but and you're yes. right. If Kratos can be a mascot, a total terrible person can be as well. So, um, I'm not even going to get into that conversation. <laughs> yeah, uh, him being a quote one day, father figure. One no. day, I want to review those games, but I do not uh, want to replay Last of Us. So I'm I might. don't either. I, I don't. played it once. Once was enough, but I will someday play it again for the show. Because it it's one of those games I feel like I need to I need to play for the show because it's such a big game. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a tentpole cultural icon kind of game, and you really do have to cover it. Um, I'm lucky I don't have to because my show is nostalgic and it's yes. not nostalgic. <laughs> you can't be nostalgic about a thing they re-release every two years and expect hey, people to pay sixty dollars. Three for versions it. of it, so it must be old. Uh, right? yeah. it can't just be it, only ten years old. It must be twenty, right? It's just refreshed. It's just got a new facelift. It's just refreshed over and over. So, uh, so Kratos, you're correct. Sackboy, which is a good mm. idea. Sackboy, good old Sackboy. I forget little, about Little Big Planet because I've never played so any do of I. it. So do I. I played the first one for about an hour. I thought it was charming, and I did something else. I, I just didn't didn't stick with me. Uh, Nathan Drake. Oh, I should have known that one. That's, that's what the one we should have known, right? And then the fourth one I've never heard of. Hopefully you have. Kuru and Toro. I have not. All right, well, let's see what the internet has to say about these two jokers. Kuru I'm curious, Toro, though. also known as the Sony Cat, is a fictional character created by Sony Interactive Entertainment. He's an anthropomorphized cat who participates in numerous events and tries to act like a human. Um, uh, I'm going to guess Japan. Is this a black and white cat? I don't know. I didn't click it. I'm just looking at the, oh, okay. the, the I just, I don't want to lose my Tor- place. Yeah, Toro and Kuro, they are black and white cats. I have never seen them before in my life. Fantastic. Uh, this is going swimmingly. Hopefully people aren't punching out. How about this? How about Rare? Now, Rare, so many great properties. Banjo. So many classic. Um, 
some of the classic things, games, and what do you think rare? Rare, you think Banjo-Kazooie? I think Banjo, yeah. Nope, Mr. Pants. Who the f*** what have I got? is Mr. Pants? I, I do not know who the f*** what have I got? Mr. Pants is. Well, let me <laughs> tell you, the game by which this is named is It's Mr. Pants is a puzzle video game <laughs> developed by Rare. It was published by <laughs> THQ for the Game Boy Advanced handheld game console in 2004-2005. The game was published internationally on mobile phones by Infusio in both 2005, and that's when the blurb ends. Yeah, it's a puzzle game. It looks like Tetris. I, it's, I mean, it's not yeah. like Tetris in like the way it plays, but like the blocks look like Tetris that you're trying to fit in two places. It looks really strange. Well, according to the internet, that is Rare's mascot. So sweet. Um, let's go. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That Again, no all sense, these crazy they already would have been making games. Years before that, maybe because all their games were made for somebody else, like for Nintendo, you know, and that's an you know Banjo Kazooie oh. or maybe Golden Eye. They can't own James. Well, Golden Eye, yeah, because that's a that's a movie course, property. Right. But you know, they were making some for other developers. Maybe I don't know. And it could I be. Know. I mean, they could have something to do with it. Like Banjo might have been something that was sold to at one point. Like because Banjo might have been like when they when Microsoft bought them, that might be a Microsoft thing now. So that could be it. And Mr. Pants, I'm assuming nobody wants Mr. Pants, so. No, no, kid. Who, who, who could possibly care about Mr. Pants? <laughs> All right, a couple other here, a couple others here I want to take a look at and just kind of kind of poke fun at a little bit. Um, I'm going to, let's see, let's do Sunsoft. Oh, God, I know Sunsoft very well. Oh, this cannot- is right the alley then. I cannot think of a game at all, like a mascot for them. A mascot game? Arrow the Acrobat. Oh, God, from Super Nintendo? Yep. Arrow the Acrobat. Man, that that's not a game that I have thought of existing in a very long time. I don't remember if it's good. I don't remember at all. I don't I think remember, it is. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. I remember playing it, but I don't remember. Uh, I, Tengen. That's a good... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Which one? Worked. Oh, sorry. Tengen. Tengen, Tengen. What is, is that a company? Yeah, they I'm make games. Sure. Remember Tengen games? You know, they have like the... Or they're the ones the that made days. the bootleg Nintendo games? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those guys. <laughs> I know of them, but I don't know anything about... I don't know who they are, really. I have no idea who their mascot would be. Awesome Possum. I have no idea. What that, that is, is. It's a terrible, terrible game, Awesome Possum. <laughs> um, again, right in the pocket of the, of you know, the 16-bit era... I think it was 16 bit, actually. I don't even remember. It was 8 or 16. Yeah, I, I can't even that, think of it. Like, Arrow, Arrow the Acrobat, I knew exactly what that game was because I remember renting it or something and not, or looking at it. And I played it at some point, ROMs probably, but I knew of it. Indeed. Indeed. All right. I'm going to do, here comes the big hitter. The big hitter. And this has four, I think there's four, three or four, three. It's Nintendo. No, oh, Nintendo, please. Come on, I'm just sitting there all day. Uh, Square Enix. Oh, Moogle or Mog. Mm-hmm. There's Chocobo. four here, actually. There's four, there's four here. So, yeah, Mog. Should Chocobo. be a Chocobo, I'm assuming, for one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Brain not work. I'm trying to think of other ones that could be mask. I'm assuming these are not like, these are, are they characters or like furry characters? They're characters. They're all they're all characters in 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 games. Cl- Hence mascot. Cloud. Yep. Cloud Strife is number three. Three out of three. What's the last one? This is the hardest one of the four. I'm not. I'm not sure. Lightning. Maybe they do love lightning. Yeah, they do love lightning, but she is not considered a mascot. S- uh, slime from Dragon all Warrior. from Dragon Quest because they're owned by. Okay. Yep. You see, yep, when I yep, think yep. of Square Enix, I think of the original Square, because I, f- I was a big, big fan of Squaresoft back in the day. So I forget that they, that they, you know, that they merged with Enix, even though it was Enix because they were in the more successful company of the two at right. the time. But <laughs> okay, yep, indeed, that. that makes indeed. sense. And then I, I also this is this should be obvious, but who knows? Maybe not. Um, Xbox Game Studios. Is this Banjo? No. 
I'll give you another guess. Oh, it's got to be Master X- Chief. What am I thinking? Yeah, there you go. Master Chief. I, I had to give you another one. I was like, wait it's a second. Because be- I was thinking maybe Banjo because they bought it. That's what was on my mind. But Master Chief makes perfect sense. Yep, that's fa- fair. Oh, this is actually a neat one. I, just, I would never guess this. LucasArts. What is LucasArts' mascot? Yoda. Well, no, <laughs> no, I don't think that would be the case, because that, that's like a that's like a star Lucas. Well, Lucas Arts was Arts. Star Wars, pretty much. Yes, yeah, I mean, but still, um, sure. you won't you, you won't get it. Chuck the plant. You're right. I would not have gotten that. No. Do you remember Chuck the plant? No. Chuck the plant is from Maniac Mansion. He's the I have giant never plant. Played Maniac Mansion. You know what? That's it. Thank you so much for checking out <laughs> this edition. I want of... to. Is that the NES game or is that just a PC game? Oh. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of <laughs> Good. You are missing out on a treat. I love Maniac Mansion. What is it? I on? love, love, love the game. So it was initially um, on PC. I think it was on the Amiga oh. first, and it was on the Commodore for, uh, and as well. PC game. The NES game is what um, really kind of didn't, ex- didn't expand it into popular fandom, but it was its biggest platform. And that's the one um, I think most people are familiar with. Okay. It's absolutely worth playing today, the NES version. You just have to kind of get used to manipulating a cursor with a D-pad. There is something very wrong with that. If you know how to change that in like an emulator, please do so. It makes your life so much easier. Um, Because you really ought to play the NES version. Graphics are better. um, Even though there are some kind of some of the... uh, more off-color humor is sanitized out, as Nintendo does. And it's got the best, one of the best NES soundtracks, arguably one of the best video game soundtracks ever written. The soundtrack to uh, Maniac Mansion on the NES is beyond reproach. Uh, it is wonderful. Um, if you want to hear me talk about uh, Maniac Mansion for two and a half hours, go ahead and check out MageCast. Um, I do an episode about Maniac Mansion, I think it was last year. I don't know the number. But we talked for a good two hours about that game huh. uh, because I love it so. I should try I can, it one day. It's awesome, dude. It's 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 just a uh, it's a treat. And <laughs> if you've ever played Day of the Tentacle, you'll kind of you know, obviously that. Not. I'm not going to say it again. No. So here's what you're going to do. Your homework assignment, <laughs> Mike Alberton. <laughs> I don't know how much you enjoy point and click adventures. I don't. You know. You say, okay. Well, you are going to like him to play. Maniac Mansion, and then Day of the Tentacle. Okay. And then you're free. You don't need to do ever. You don't need to play a King's Quest game. You don't need to play a Space Quest. I have you don't played need to one play a Space Mon- Quest game. You don't need to play a Monkey Island. You don't need to do any of the LucasArts. Nothing. Just just those two. Maniac Mansion is a treat and a joy. And it's, it's oh, God, I love that game so much. Oh. Now, all I want to do now is play Maniac, Maniac Mansion. That's literally what I think I might do right <laughs> after this conversation. Boy, that oh funny boy, that I did that to oh you. you. You know what? That's it. And you know what? Let's just, let's just finish up this, uh, this ridiculous bit with um, Sega. Um, three on the list there. Oh, Sonic, of course. Right, of course. My br- I'm assuming Alex Kid because they like Alex Kid. for Excellent, some excellent, excellent. Thank you, Greg Seward. I listened to you enough times. Uh, <laughs> that's where that came from. I can't think of the other two. Uh, Opa Opa. I have from no the idea game who Fantasy that is. Zone. It says former, so this is like okay. obviously a not no longer a thing. And then Okay. What's going on here? What is this <laughs> nonsense? I think Wikipedia is just is just is trolling me it's now. Just lying to you today. It's just lying to me. Segata Sanshiro. Is a character created by Sega to advertise the Sega Saturn in Japan between 1997 and 1998. So if you look him up, it's like a like a judo fighter. I seem to remember seeing him in like advertisements or on YouTube. If you're looking for like old video game commercials, um, he was a character that they developed as like a mascot to sell the Saturn. So there it is. I guess I guess Sonic wasn't enough. Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> evidently wasn't going to reach like the super cool kids who had aged out of that particular character. And I think we made it. We did. Mike, thank you so much for uh, joining <laughs> me legitimately now 
ending the show. Okay. Uh, man, thank you so Sorry much I for uh, a, a bad game for us to talk about. No, this this show is all about this. This is the whole point. We talk about a show for like 15 minutes, talk about a game for about 15 minutes, and then it's 15 minutes of non sequiturs. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my brother and I started talking about James Bond Jr. We ended up talking about the hydrogen bomb. So that's what Ooh. this program does. I like um, that idea. It's it's just it's just allowed to go off the rails. That's the the whole point. I should have told you that too. By the way, I should have okay. should have said. Hey, it's all good. It's non sequiturs are okay. Thank you so much for uh, joining me, Mike. I really appreciate it. Again, if you have listened to it, uh, Games My Mom Found is a wonderful program. There's lots of episodes out there. If you dig the MCU, Mike and I and other people talk about the entire MCU from Phase One through Phase Three. Three of us. That- for the most yeah. part, that we suckered, <laughs> I suckered we, in it? two other guys to watch all those movies with me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're we're slowly but surely, I think, slogging our way through phase four. But Very that might slowly. take a couple. Yeah, I, who, who, so it's, it's exhausting. I don't. Marvel's phase four exhausting. is not doing it for me. It really isn't. I mean, there's some there's some gems in there, but oof, wait till we get to Eternals. Good lord. A, yeah, that's a, yeah, a, that's not that far away. If I get if I get on my ass and do those, yeah. I, I I know, I know, <laughs> I've heard. I'm well aware. I'll be there. <laughs> um, and if you enjoy this show, then I really think you're going to enjoy um, the main show, A Gamer Looks at Forty, the very feed in which you found this one. It's all there in one place. I'm not going to make two feeds for you to wade through. You have to wade through one. It's perfectly fine. Um, I thank you for listening to the program. Uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the game looks at 40 um, if you want to uh, help the show out monetarily and gamer looks at 40 on twitter for everything else uh, social media on instagram facebook uh, obviously twitter and all the other things that all the other podcasts do you know the drill i'm not the only podcast you listen to mike thanks again for check for hanging out with me and until next time continue being awesome